Right now, Senator John Hoven, Republican of North Dakota. It was interesting, Senator, that the uh, Republican response given by the new Senator, Joni Ernst of Iowa, really had one hard specific, which was uh, Keystone. Uh, is this going to be an iconic fight uh, that will be waged for the next couple of years that I think your side's probably going to end up winning? But why is it such an important issue to people, uh, not just the re Republicans, but some of the Democrats who are supporting it? What's the hard case for it that we haven't really heard? It's about building an energy plan that makes us truly energy secure, meaning we produce more energy here at home and working with Canada, produce more oil and gas than we consume so we don't have to get it from OPEC. And you see the benefit right now at the pump with uh, lower gas prices, huge benefit to consumers and to our economy, but it's also a national security issue. We can't continue to rely on places uh, in the Middle East uh, like OPEC, like Venezuela for our oil and gas. I understand the argument, but isn't it a pipeline through the United States, not to the United States. That it goes on to the world market. It goes down to the Gulf and it goes to the world and we can bid for it at the world price, but it isn't our oil. It's the Canadian oil being sold to the world. Isn't that the case? No. If you look at the environmental impact statement prepared by the Obama administration, the State Department, it indicates that the oil will be used here, and in fact, it goes to refineries in our country, sure not just on the Gulf Coast, but also uh, in Patoka, uh, Illinois. And remember, this isn't just about moving Canadian crude. It also moves domestic crude from states like mine, North Dakota and Monta uh, Montana, light, sweet, Bakken crude. Chris Hayes, go ahead. Senator, do you have any concerns that the, uh, about the sort of sustainability of the oil boom in your state and in the tar sands if we continue to see oil at this price? The Saudis have basically telegraphed to global oil markets. They are willing to deal with oil at this price where they're clearing a profit and they aren't in the tar sands very soon. It's much harder in the Bakken shale. How long can North Dakota oil industry survive oil at this price? So you're making a really important point here with that question. OPEC right now is trying to shut us down. They see us gaining energy independence. Nice they don't want that. And so that's what they're doing is they're trying to undermine our domestic uh, industry and our efforts with Canada so that they can reassert their market dominance. And that's why it's so important that we continue to build an energy plan that allows us to produce more oil and gas as well as other kinds of uh, energy, but, including renewables. But so, isn't it a problem, Senator, if, 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 if there's continued investment and they're willing to go at this price level for a very long period of time? No. If we build the right infrastructure and we have the right kind of a business environment, we can compete and we can win this fight. Is this industrial, uh, is this a case of predatory price cutting by yes. the Saudis? Yes, that's exactly what it is. They are undercutting so that they can try to reassert their market dominance. So when we pay a little more than two bucks for regular right now in most pumps, even in D.C., around D.C., that's really a function in, entirely of the Saudis. You're saying they're doing this as a favor to us on the surface so they can screw us in terms of energy independence. I'm saying there's a number of aspects to it. They certainly want to reduce that price to because they're, uh, they want to affect Iran. Iran is a petro-dependent state. Also Russia, which is supporting Iran, but at the same time, they know they've got to maintain their market share so that they can continue to set that price. So it affects us as well, and we're part of that strategy. But we can continue to maintain and grow our industry if we do it right with the right infrastructure and the right kind of investment climate. That also helps us invest in new technologies that produce better environmental stewardship, including things like carbon capture and storage. Senator John Hoven, Republican of North Dakota, thanks for being with us tonight. It's actually been great to talk to you about Thank this. You, really sir. appreciate it, Thank sir. You.